Today we're gonna be dyeing cross stitch fabric. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, Crystal Heart. My name is Crystal and today we will be doing tea dyeing and coffee dyeing of cross stitch fabric. So I have some Ada, uh, this is 14 count Ada. I have two pieces and we're gonna be doing small batch dyeing. I'm gonna show you guys how I do my small batch dyeing uh, for tea dye and coffee dye. So I'm gonna move you guys over there to my kitchen and get y'all close up so you can see exactly what I do. Okay, so what you're gonna need, of course, is your fabric of choice. This is Ada. And you can do it on any color you want, really, but um, to get the full effect, plain white is what I use. But you can use like a tan, or you can add tea dye to already colored fabric. And then I use mason jars. Um, the one that I usually use is a regular mouth mason jar, but the wide mouth mason jars are actually better because you can get the fabric in there easier. You will need black tea packets. Um, the brand that I use is called Tetley, and it's just like 100 packs come in this box. It's super cheap, like a couple of bucks at Walmart, I believe. And then you will also need, for the coffee dyeing, you will need any brand um, single pack coffee. This is the way I do it. You can do it whatever way you choose, but um, this is what I use. And this is like a dollar for a pack of seven. You will also need hot water. I use my electric tea kettle. You can just put the water. You can just put the water in the microwave or heat it up on the stove or however you get your hot water. But it needs to be super hot, like boiling temperatures. So starting off with the tea dye, what I do is I'll drop a packet of tea at the bottom, and then I'll add my hot water. I add it about halfway. Then I'll take my fabric, scrunch it up. This has this does not have to be in any kind of special way. Just however you can get it to fit in the jar. Scrunch it and push it into the jar. The best way that you can. And remember the water inside is super hot. Then I take another tea packet and I sit it on top and then I add more hot water to the top and I just fill up the jar now you can just let this sit uh, if you have a lid you can cover it up so that way you could keep your heat in there I'm gonna cover mine and really when I cover it I don't want to cover it too tight because it is super hot and some of that steam needs to get released so I kind of keep it loose but put that off to the side now we're gonna get ready to do the coffee so I'm gonna take my packet of coffee open it up and add it to the jar Now I like to use instant coffee because it dissolves. If you use uh, regular coffee grounds, you can put it maybe in some type of little satchel or something so that it doesn't, um, you don't have to wash so many grounds off of it. All right, so I add a little bit of water and I'm gonna stir it up. Oh, it smells so good. And just like with the tea, I'm gonna scrunch up this fabric and get it inside of the jar. Whatever way I can. And 
and usually per jar I can fit up to two uh, pieces of fabric these are uh, like 20 inch pieces um, I'll add some more water um, yeah so usually I could fit up to two pieces per jar but today all I needed was one tea and one coffee so I have one in each and I'm gonna just color this one now with the coffee I'm gonna kind of shake a little bit because I don't with the tea I had a, a tea at the top with the coffee I don't have any coffee at the top so I'm gonna kind of shake it to get the coffee all dispersed and we're just gonna let these two sit for maybe um you can let it sit as long as you want really and the longer it sits the darker it will get but because my water is so hot that it really it really won't take long at all i think i'll probably let it sit for about 30 minutes and then i'll come back but um yeah because my water is so hot that it's really setting into the fabric quickly but anyway, I'll come back and show you guys what we do next. Okay, so I've had my jar sitting for about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. Um, and what I'm going to do next is take them out of the water and rinse them in the sink. Okay, for me, what I do is I just take them and kind of arrange it like this. Just any kind of scrunched way on the parchment paper. And the same for the coffee dye. Okay, so we have the tea dyed, which as you can see, the tea transfers to the fabric a lot easier than the coffee. But once we get in the oven and uh, let it heat set, we'll get some more modeling on the coffee dyed one. So I'll put it in the oven at about 200 degrees for as long as you want, really, until you get the modeling that you desired modeling, which it could be an hour, two hours however you feel just keep it at a low temp so that you're not uh, burning your fabric but the fabric is wet right now so um, I'll show you whenever I take it out of the oven what it will look like then okay so this is what it looks like this is what it looks like whenever it comes out of the oven and as you can see you got all this darkening, which is what I like to get in my fabric from the oven. And if you let it sit in there, sometimes it will be completely dry, but mine is not dry completely. But I wanted to take it out. I'll let it air dry. So let me show you guys what it looks like when I unravel it. Uh -huh. All right, so this is the tea dyed Ada and it came out great. You see all the modeling. And once it dries completely, it's just slightly damp. Once it dries completely or 
drive a little bit more than this i'll iron it and um i'll iron it zigzag stitch the edges and get it ready to ship out to my customer and this is the coffee dyed so you see all of that it came out great too so i'm gonna put them close together so you can kind of see the difference between tea dye and coffee dye tea dye comes out a little stronger and to me the um undertones are more of like a yellowy color it's more of a warm undertone and with the coffee you get to me in my opinion more of a cool brown undertone so um like i said i'm gonna let that dry and iron it out zigzag the edges so i hope you really learned something today and that you try out doing your own tea dyes and coffee dyes this is like the easiest way if you want to do big batches you can um do it in a big pot and stuff like that but for me i'm always doing small batches so i just use the jars and if you like the look of the tea dye or the coffee dye but you're not interested in doing it yourself my essay shop link will be below under my link tree and i do sell them in my essay shop so you can head over there and purchase them from me if you like um and that's about it so we are still doing our road to 1000 series this is episode seven of that yesterday we were at 954 subscribers we actually went up to 958 last night after the video i posted last night but something goes on with youtube where like they'll delete subscribers that are like inactive or whatnot so i woke up this morning and i had lost eight subscribers and i'm pretty sure eight people didn't decide to unsubscribe in the middle of the night so i'm pretty sure youtube did that so right now we are at 952 so if you like this video don't forget to hit the like button and also if you're not subscribed hit the subscribe button and if you think you're subscribed just check to be sure that you're still subscribed because youtube is unsubscribing people and if you aren't then go ahead and hit the subscribe button again also hit the bell button so that you can be notified anytime i post a new video and i'll see you guys tomorrow bye